We've seen a lot of original DMG Game Boy Raspberry Pi builds, but not so much Game Boy Pocket. What I have here are three boards which do the same thing, taking a Raspberry Pi and encasing it inside a Game Boy Pocket to make a retro emulation handheld. They're all pretty much assembled. All I have to do is to encase it inside a Game Boy Pocket shell and install the software to run the game. Also, stay tuned at the end as I'll be doing a giveaway of two of these consoles. First off, I'll be looking at the Pocket Pi by Galaxy Gaming. One thing to note with Galaxy Gaming is it looks as if the company is no longer running. So I'd say this is a pretty rare board to own. All the wiring has also been soldered and I also bought a pre-cut shell from them too. All I had to supply was a Raspberry Pi 0W. I covered the component with some captain tape so it will not touch the Raspberry Pi. The soldering for the Pi was pretty simple. It uses a GPIO header to attach the Raspberry Pi. I soldered one of the pins so I can level the Pi and then go along and solder each pin. Once done, I then trimmed the pins so the pins do not protrude out and poke anything. Next was soldering the two wires for the battery, making sure I get the polarities the right way round. Galaxy Gaming also came with some 3D printed brackets to hold it in place. I just used some hot glue to hold it all in place. The last piece of soldering was to solder the points from the shoulder button board to the points on the pocket pi. Most of this information was lost due to Galaxy Gaming website going down, but luckily the pseudo mod forum had some documentation about it still. Once done, all I had to do was close everything up and screw everything down. Galaxy Gaming also had some glass screen protectors and covered the screen perfectly. All I had to do was stick it down with some double sided tape. Next up we have the Kite Retro Circuit Shield. So this is the last board I have from Kite Retro. Again the circuit shield came pre-made so I did not have to do any soldering on the board. The circuit shield also differs as it uses a Raspberry Pi CM3 as opposed to a Pi Zero. This has added benefits of being more powerful than a Pi Zero and can be installed easily. Just slot the Pi CM3 into the slot like a RAM stick and clip it down. As an extra bonus, the circuit shield also has an optional PSP analog stick attachment. There are four pins that you will need to solder. I first began by attaching one pin and ensuring everything is straight. Once everything is straight, I just solder the rest of the points. I then snipped off some of the screw posts from the analog stick as we're not using them anymore. Next was a speaker which has two wires that I needed to solder and then attach it to the board with a small JST connector. Once this was done, we can assemble the front half. I 3D printed some brackets to help some of the placement of the buttons and screens. Unfortunately, I don't have the correct screen protector for the circuit shield, so I just used the one that came with the shell, which I did replace again. Closing up the shell and almost calling it done, I realised I missed out one vital thing and that was the shoulder buttons. Again I 3D printed some brackets and again using pseudo mod forums for some help with the wiring diagram. I began by hot gluing the buttons to the bracket only after realising that doing some soldering whilst the buttons were glued started melting the glue and the buttons were sliding off. But once the wiring was done, I drilled some holes for the buttons to fit through and then glued the brackets in place. And finally, I can connect the shoulder buttons to the board and close up the case and screw everything down. And lastly, we have the Gabozi Pokal, which for those that are confused by the naming, it's sort of an acronym of Game Boy Zero Pocket All-in-One. Same as the Pocket Pi, it uses the Raspberry Pi Zero W, which is soldered to the GPIO header on the Kabozi Pokal. Using the same technique, I tack down one of the pins and make sure everything is straight before I solder all the other pins. And again, snipping off the pins so the pins do not protrude out. So the Gabozi Pokal doesn't actually come with a shoulder button option and instead opted to have six face buttons. All I had to do was attach the battery, which was connected with a JST connector. And all that there was to do was close everything and call it done. Stay tuned for the review after this quick ad break. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. 
If you have a project in mind and require custom PCBs or 3D printing services, then PCBWay will help you out with that. They have an easy website to upload your projects to. Just wait for their team of experts to review your circuit board or 3D files and you'll receive your projects with absolute professionalism. I've used PCBWay for my 3D prints and they've come out amazingly. So if you have a project in mind, please check out PCBWay. Now back to the video. Firstly, I want to mention for the life of me, I could not find any RetroPie images for the Gabozi Pakal. So the only thing I can review about this would be the build itself. It was definitely the quickest one to build out of the three, mainly because of it not having any shoulder buttons to deal with. So it was mainly the front shell that needed trimming. Overall, it has everything you need for a handheld system to play up to PS1 games. How it would run? would be another thing. But it does have all the necessary buttons to play all your retro titles. It uses a micro USB for charging and a volume wheel similar to the original Game Boy Pocket and also an added headphone jack which I was pleased to see. The Pocket Pi also used the Raspberry Pi Zero so the performance was not great and could only really play up to 16-bit titles and below. Similar to the Gobozi Pakao, it also has a volume wheel, a micro USB for charging and a headphone jack. It also has added shoulder buttons that was well thought out to build as it was just a button board that attached to the back of the shell and using the same button membrane as the front buttons. Here is some gameplay so you can see the performance yourself. And lastly, I saved the best till last. And again, it's mainly down to Kite Retro's engineering. And using a CM3 Raspberry Pi, this meant I would be able to play games without the lack of performance as the Pi Zero, and yet be as small as the Pi Zero. It has a USB-C for charging, which I prefer. And instead of a volume wheel, like the other two, it has this digital wheel that will be used to access the menu, like the circuit gem. You can control the volume, turn the Wi-Fi on and off, and even have a digital keyboard. As the board was custom made, Kite Retro also added the option of using HDMI, which is a great addition. It has a trigger and shoulder buttons, which, if I'm honest with you, isn't the greatest to play on. Maybe it wasn't the right button switches to use, but the placement of the buttons weren't great in my opinion. It also has the added option to use a PSB joystick, and again, for the life of me, couldn't get it working, even after reading countless forum posts and GitHub readme from Kite Retro. Out of the three, it was definitely the most trickiest to build, and that mainly came down to the shoulder buttons being very fiddly to assemble but it's by far the best one out of the three. I felt like that there was a lot more care and thought about the end product. And I think what it came down to was not so much how it plays as they're all using the same shell, but what it can play. So my final thoughts before I wrap up this video is why is there next to no Raspberry Pi builds in 2024? I'm sure there are people still using Raspberry Pis to make their portable handhelds, but I don't think I've seen much in terms of people selling and making builds like this anymore. Like Kite Retro seems to not be making any since the Circuit Shield. And keep in mind that all of these builds were bought around five or more years ago. And we have seen a boom in the last five years with retro handhelds and are a lot cheaper than if you were to build one with a Raspberry Pi. I feel like there's not really much of a space in the retro handheld market apart from being a project piece if you want to mess around with a Raspberry Pi. But please prove me wrong as I would love to see a groundbreaking build with a Raspberry Pi. For the competition, all you have to do to enter is to write a comment about what game you look forward to in 2025. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope you consider subscribing to my channel. And to that note, I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers!